Hello everyone, my name is Mark. This will be the first of many videos that I'll be making about multivariable calculus or Calc 3 or MA261. So a little bit about me, right? My name is Mark and I am majoring in aeronautical and astronautical engineering or aerospace engineering, if you call it. And I'm also a private pilot. I took um, I made 261 back in fall 2019 semester. Um, and uh, what I'm, the way I'm going to teach you or show, teach you uh, how to succeed in Calc 3 is for my experience of, of helping students with Calc 3 for many years, one common thing that I realize is that students are a lot of times looking for the numbers. What I mean by that is they 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 often look they are often looking for the sort of the the correct answer choices the right answer right in terms of in terms of number um and uh but they t but a lot of times they forget about the process of which how they get to the solution and that's what I really want to be focusing on a lot in my videos so um Based on my background, something that I have found out is, you know, something called checklists, which are used by pilots and also the one pager used by the astronauts. So what they essentially do is um, in, in, in the case of an emergency, um, pilots and astronauts have this um, simplified list of things um, described in English, like simple English that they can just immediately perform like little simple, little simple steps. Um, and then it, as they perform through the progress through the list, they can return their vehicles to a safe condition. So converting that into converting that idea into Calc 3 is, well, we should treat our exams, which are most the largest percentage of your grade, um, you know, when you when we when we take an exam, we really have no time to think about um, the their you know sort of the def you know derivation of these definitions. We really just need to be able to identify the problem, recall the solving steps, and then solve it. Right, um, you, each each exam you have like five or six minutes on average for you to solve each problem. And, you know, and then of course, the actual amount of time you will spend on each question will be more or less, right? depending on the difficulty. So with that said, I, before I go start, go ahead and start with the technical content, I would like to share with you some of the resources that's available um, in this course, right? Some websites, some videos and helps, right? So let's just start with, right? It's me. Um, you know, I, I, I took this course, I know how, you know, difficult it is. This course, this course was, it was not a fun time for me, but I made it through and I think consider myself okay. Right. At, at good at explaining things to people and I can help you understand material as we progress, right. Give you a deeper understanding, not outside of your lecture. And I will teach you the how to, right. And that's what I talked about before, right. That's what I really want to do to take away from my videos, right? Um, and then each videos are specifically targeted to, you know, better prepare for your exams, right? If you understand the content in my videos, you really, sh you really, all you, you all you really need to do as exam approaches is to, is to practice more questions and, uh, hammer down and, um, you know, have a firm grasp of what I taught you and just speed up yourself, right? So this is my YouTube channel. Um, uh, and you can go ahead and scan that. Um, so I'm going to go, if you want to pause it, go feel free, but I'm going to jump to the next one, right? So your professors and TAs, right? So they are of incredibly useful resources for you to take advantage of, right? They are very knowledgeable and you should definitely ask them, right? But Something I would like to remind you is, I mean, is that whenever you ask a question, make sure you think 
first, right? Do I really, am I really confused or am I just, am I just asking because that's my first reaction, initial reaction, right? I might know the, I might know the answer to the question and, and, and you know, that saves your time a little bit as well. And your peers, right? And your classmates, your friends who are taking the same course or who already took the course, right? Ask them in person, right? Ask them on Piazza or GroupMe if you have those set up in your course, right? And you should study with them for homeworks as well as for your exams. All right? Okay. So Chen Flix, right? So, you know, um, Dr. Chen, he, you know, has his lecture videos from previous semesters and he also has notes available, right? But something I would um, strongly advise you is do not rely on it, right? You need to go to your lectures to do well and then to get a firm understanding of, of the content. And, uh, and, and granted, right, the, the course schedule might vary, right? The course schedule might vary. What's covered in Dr. Chen's lecture might not be, you know, um, might not be available to you and vice versa. So, and here's the QR code and then you have a, um, the, the link available to you as well. And then there are some really good, you, you know, math channels on YouTube, right? Notably is three blue, one brown, uh, Zach star, right? Professor nail art, um, uh, that's a pretty good one as well. Um, they have like very, they, what's, what makes them stand out is some of them have like really intriguing videos plus some great animations. And then that can really help you to understand concepts. Um, and that will c become very important for later chapters, um, such as, um, you know, most important, most notably chapter 17, which is the final chapter of the class. And you will spend a third of your, uh, semester, uh, learning about chapter 17. And, um, one more is the department of mathematics website, right? The links and then the QR code are here as well, right? You can find the past exam archives in here. So, um, the key, the, the, the keys to the questions are available, but the most of the solutions are not. So it's, so I think everybody should practice a few exam pro copies before they go head into the, head into the exam. Um, but I just feel like it would be nice if they, you know, included that solution for you, but they don't. So this is where border exam comes in, right? Border exam is made by actually by a good friend of mine. Um, right. These are past exams are explained. Um, you can study them by topic or by semester, right? And it's a, it's a really good resources for preparing for exams. And then again, the, the link and then the QR code is pre, uh, presented here. Uh, like I really like board exams, but I do need to remind you that, mm, that there are certain questions that um, my friend explained um, not very rigorously, uh, rigorously. Um, you know, maybe my friend took some shortcuts or maybe my friend just didn't explain things clearly or sometimes incorrectly for my, for all I have heard from my previous students, but just something to keep in mind. It's a, you should definitely check it out. I highly recommend it. And finally you have a math resource room, right? Um, this one is basically your TAs will be available at a certain location and at a certain time. Um, the exact, um, you need to check it up. It might change every semester. So, but the, but the link f to get to that information website is presented here as well. So that wraps up the, my first video and I will, s in the next video, we will start talking about, um, technical content, especially uh, review of vectors.